Hello everybody, my name is Chase and this is my partner, Ethan. This is our 2021 Virtual RoboCup finalist presentation. We are from Singapore and we study in Nanyang Primary School in Primary 5K. This is our first time competing in a robotics competition, so we are extremely thrilled to be in the finalists. So about the challenge task, we are in the inner 12th Coast Base Rescue category, and this is the map over here. We have to write statements and code in order to allow the robot to move about collecting red cyan and black objects. The robot has to do that while avoiding traps like the blue encased in yellow square or other obstacles to avoid getting trapped or losing all its points. It has to deposit as it can only um, collect six objects at a time without depositing and when it deposits the loaded object score will double. The score for red is 10 points, cyan is 15 points, and black is 20 points. When collected in the blue zones, the amount of points for that particular object will double. So like for black, if collected in the special blue zone, will double to 40. And we have to do this inside a 6 minute time limit, meaning every second is crucial. So after analyzing the game, we found that there are three major sections, collecting, depositing, and avoidance. Each of these has a condition and action. Everything else, which I will discuss later, are bell and whistles to improve the performance of the robot. So, like for example, the condition for collecting is the color sensor and the collection is the action. Or like for avoidance, it's either the color sensor or the ultrasonic sensor, then it will move away, which is the action. So these are examples of the code. Now, we focus on creating simple, elegant solutions, because simplicity is the key. Like Steve Jobs once said, simple can be harder than complex. You have to work hard to get your thinking clean to make it simple, but it's worth it in the end because once you get there, you can move mountains. So instead of making everything complex and adding unnecessary complications, we focus on creating simple, elegant solutions. Simple, elegant, solutions. Now, I'm going to discuss and show you some of the special algorithms that we developed for to solve specific problems. Like for example, we developed a few algorithms for time, so it only deposits when there are objects, it only avoids trap when there are objects, and it only collects objects when the loaded object is less than 6. So this is how we do it, like for example, loaded objects is greater than 0 or loaded objects is less than 6. Now we also created algorithms to help improve the collection 
of objects and to make the robot collect the objects in our preferred way. So we created two statements for each color, one for the left and one for the right, so that when one color sensor detects an object, it can still collect, because it's very rare when the when the robot both color sensors can um, detect an object and we also set wide ranges for the color sensor as you can see here to increase the chances of the object being collected and we also introduced a algorithm to make it collect two sets of red sign and black objects so that a super or super plus object will be generated. So as you can see here we created um, variables like red objects, sign objects or black objects to count the number of um, red cyan or black objects collected and it will add to that variable when collected and when and when the um and when the when all objects are deposited it will set that variable back to zero so The whole point of that red sign and black set is to generate super or super plus objects. So we created some algorithms to help find the super or super plus objects. These super or super plus objects will be generated 15 units away from the wall. So we want the robot to circle the parameter 15 units away for the super or super plus objects. So these are our code. So um, like only when the super object number is greater than zero, then it will do this in this action here. As you can see where I'm pointing at is um, the will left movement will be the distance minus the left ultrasonic sensor and the wheel right movement will be the distance plus the left ultrasonic sensor so we also created algorithms to help improve the finding of the deposit box so we are not using square targeting instead we are focusing on making sure our will speed turning angle is perfect and we added additional algorithms to help it turn into the deposit box when one color sensor detects it. So for example in the ultrasonic sensor we perfected the will speed to make it move in the direction that will most likely get it into the deposit boxes. Like for example, here, um, this offers greater flexibility than the square targeting without adding unnecessary complications. Now, we also um, created two statements called deposit left and deposit right to help it turn into the deposit zone when when um, one of its color sensors detects the orange deposit zone. So as you can see here. So what about square targeting? Well, um, square targeting uses compass or position to direct the robot to the deposit zone. Now why don't we want to do that? 
um, it adds unnecessary complications, and believe me or not, it results in a in less collection of objects, which results in lower points. Let me show you our data. This is square targeting versus our methods. As you can see, our methods consistently outperform square targeting. Now, disclaimer here, um, our square targeting methods might not be perfected, so it might have affected the score, but this is for us, this is our situation. Um, and yeah, so square targeting just doesn't work for us. And I think it's because when a robot is doing square targeting, it will miss out on a lot of objects to collect, whereas using our methods, it has a more um, free path to go and collect more objects, and hence result in greater points. So now, we just want to shout out to debugging. It's a very useful tool. and our tip to others is to test it out every few statements so you can pick up some um, mistakes and it's also very useful for code improvement like for us to tune the wheel speed to the um, to the best possible um, number so using the debugging AI you can see what's the wheel speed and stuff like that it's very useful and it's useful for a lot of other reasons like if you make callous mistakes in the code you can easily find it out rectify it now for our conclusion and also for our further and future work um we hit 1000 plus multiple times they are saying most of the time and um in the future we hope to make use of the lines given as we think they could be very useful guides to help us land in the deposit boxes so we gathered some very important and invaluable learning experiences from this competition First, we picked up valuable coding and robotic skills, and we managed to pick them up in a fun and engaging way. Also, this has been a great robotics competition experience for us, and um, we recommend anyone who um, has an interest in coding and robotics to join this competition and continue to hone your skills. So we also learned important teamwork and communication and um, um, coping well under stress skills. Um, yeah, these soft skills were also very important and we managed to learn them. So advice for others, I've said this multiple times, but simplicity is complexity. Um, simple, elegant solutions are better than complex things that don't work. I mean, that's very obvious. Um, we don't need to add unnecessary complications. We just go with the simple, but yet more impactful route. But most important of all, we hope anyone and everyone who joins this competition and joins themselves and has tremendous and have tremendous fun. Thank you so much for listening to our presentation. Hope you have a great day.